Welcome to this lecture on medical law. We'll be looking at informed consent in a minor, Gillick competence and Fraser guidelines. Again, here is our legal disclaimer. The information I am providing here is intended for education purposes only and with all information provided being well documented in the public domain. Under no circumstances shall we accept any liability for any loss or damage incurred as a result of improper use of this lecture. If you require independent legal advice, please seek professional legal opinion. I'm a medical doctor, not your lawyer. So prior to Gillick, the age at which a child could have capacity for consent was determined by the Family Law Reform Act of 1969. Under this Act, the age at which the law considers a person to have full capacity and considered them an adult was 18 years old. This is also referred to as the age of majority. Below this age, the Act states that consent of a minor who has attained the age of 16 years to any surgical, medical or dental treatment, which in the absence of consent will constitute a trespass to his person, should be as effective as it would be if he were of full age. And where a minor has, by virtue of this section, given an effective consent to any treatment, it shall not be necessary to obtain any consent for it from his parent or guardian. Therefore, presumed capacity for healthcare treatment is extended to those between the ages of 16 and 18 years. Gillick's case becomes relevant to those children that fall below the age of 16 years that are not already covered by the Family Law Reform Act of 1969. The case was reviewed by the House of Lords and the ruling resulted in increased autonomy for children. Mrs Gillick, a mother of four daughters, wrote to her local health authority requesting that whilst her daughters remain under the age of 16 years, that none of them should be provided with contraceptive advice or treatment without her involvement. The local health authority could not provide such assurance to Mrs Gillick, claiming that under specific circumstances, the doctor is within his right to provide such treatment without parental consent. The case, taken to the House of Lords, ruled against the mother, introducing the new concept of Gillip competence. The court stated that the parental right yields to the child's right to make his own decisions when he reaches a sufficient understanding and intelligence to be capable of making up his own mind on the matter requiring decision. Therefore, where a child can achieve complete understanding of the treatment for the procedure being proposed, the decision to provide consent cannot be overruled by a parent. In order for a child to be determined as Gillick competent by a healthcare professional, they must satisfy the following. They must have a complete understanding of the risks and benefits of the proposed treatment, the implications of treatment refusal and they must be able to retain this information and have sufficient intelligence and maturity to make an informed decision. It is important to note that there is no minimum age that exists for a child to be Gillick competent. However, the level of maturity and intelligence required will vary from child to child and in differing circumstances. For example, a younger child may demonstrate competence for consent to a blood test, but not for a surgical procedure such as an appendicectomy. Following the House of Lords decision, Lord Fraser issued further guidance on when a doctor may offer contraceptive advice and treatment to children under the age of 16 without parental consent. The health professional must be satisfied that the child has a full understanding of the advice being given, they cannot be persuaded to involve their parents, whether or not such contraceptive advice or treatment is provided, irrespectively, they are likely to engage in sexual intercourse, 
Where a doctor does not provide such advice or treatment, there exists risk to a child's physical and mental health. Plus, it's in the child's best interests to receive contraceptive advice or treatment with or without their parental consent. Whilst a Gillick competent child is able to provide consent to treatment without parental consent, where a child chooses to refuse treatment, the law permits a person with parental responsibility to overrule their decision. This was explained by Lord Donaldson, who stated, Consent protects the doctor from claims, whether they acquire it from their patient over the age of 16 or a Gillick competent child, or from another person having parental responsibilities. Anyone who gives him consent may take it back, but the health professional needs only one for the legal right to proceed, i.e. the doctor only requires one individual to consent, be it the Gillick competent child or the person who holds parental rights in order to legally proceed with treatment. So what have we learnt? This was a landmark case that has led to an update in the law surrounding capacity for consent in children. Children now can be treated without parental consent, providing they meet the requirements for Gillick competence. Where a consultation regarding contraceptive advice takes place for a Gillick competent child, Fraser guidelines should be followed. Thank you for watching this lecture. In the next lecture, we will review the Mental Capacity Act 2005. This act sets about new provisions relating to persons who lack capacity. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell and leave us a comment down below, letting us know where you're studying because our team love to know. Any questions and topic requests are of course welcome too. See you next time.